to help launch Breakthrough Power tonight. I'm excited and I sense that you are too. I can feel the electricity in the air. I'd like to thank Rosiel Young for organizing all our generous New Energy Movement volunteers tonight. And especially thank all the volunteers who were roped into their volunteerism at the last minute, like Richard here, who's gonna be a timekeeper for the speakers. I'm Valerie McIntyre, I'm a friend of Jean Manning's, and I am delighted to have been asked to get things started here tonight and sort of tell you how things are going to go. So, it looks like everybody's got seats. There may be a few people straggling in, and that's okay. So, yes, there's a lot of energy in the air tonight. We're celebrating the birth of breakthrough power, how quantum leap new energy inventions can transform our world. And the books are for sale over there. They'll be available all through the program tonight and afterwards as well. So tonight you're going to meet the authors, Jean Manning and Joel Garvin, and also several researchers who are profiled in the book, who are eager to share their knowledge, and also to discuss their work with you later in the evening. Breakthrough power. Why do we need breakthrough power? Well, the book says, the authors tell us that products based on petroleum, natural gas, and coal will be useful to humankind for a long time to come. So these industries will remain far into the future. However, for the good of all life on Earth, we must move away from their wasteful and dangerously polluting use as fuels in the transportation, heating, and electricity generation sectors. Breakthrough Power is written in an easy-to-read style with anecdotes and photographs. It introduces a huge topic, why the grassroots effort to bring clean energy abundance to humankind needs the support of regular people everywhere. This book is about solving a dilemma. It's about bringing a new era of energy abundance into view. It's about dedicated scientists in pursuit of cosmic energy and of technologies that mimic nature and that are in harmony with nature and instead of warring against nature. The book presents a sampling of the rich variety of technological breakthroughs that could replace dirty fuels. You'll read about early energy pioneers, Nikola Tesla, Victor Schauberger, Henry Moray, John Keeley, Walter Russell, and Wilhelm Reich. And you'll read about Floyd Sweet shaking the magnetic field and Tom Bearden challenging the known laws of physics. You'll also meet members of the current scientific community and discover that there's far more to consider than conventional alternatives like solar and wind technologies. You'll read about cars running on water, about inventions using powerful magnets, and about the difficulty faced by inventors whose work challenges current scientific thinking. Yes, it's definitely an opportune time for a quantum shift in how we power our lives and in how we use our personal power to bring about the change that we want in our world. So, co-authors Joel Garvin and Jean Manning are heaving a sigh of relief tonight, right? <laughs> and celebrating. To write a book about such an important subject at this critical time in history and to make complicated science and technical information accessible and enjoyable to a lay audience is a truly great accomplishment. And we're all here to mark the occasion. Thanks to Jean and Joel and many dedicated researchers, we're learning a new way of looking at the world. And I quote from the preface, there are better ways to go. We don't have to resign ourselves to a brutal future. It's energy wake-up time, and Breakthrough Power is the right book for this moment. 
One fully awake person who's doing his best to awaken others is Joel Garvin, one of the co-authors of Breakthrough Power. Joel Garvin is a scientist with over 20 years experience in product development and as a technical consultant to the paper, chemical, building products and water treatment industries. Joel has consulted with dozens of large and small companies in North and South America. He is a highly regarded speaker in the industry and he regularly instructs classes of engineers. And as well as doing his day job, Joel also speaks passionately whenever he has time in support of new breakthrough energy technologies. Joel is the president of the New Energy Movement based in Portland, Oregon, which is the inspiration for our own New Energy Movement here based in Vancouver. <coughs> New Energy Movement, also known as NEM, is a grassroots nonprofit organization dedicated to creating a sustainable civilization and a sustainable global economy based on advanced clean energy technologies. Joel is one of those individuals who takes his humanitarian responsibilities seriously, who regularly goes to bat for humanity and for the environment. And last year, he even went to Washington to present an historic piece of legislation calling for federal support for research and development of advanced clean energy technologies. The document is called the Energy Innovation Act, and although it was written for the U.S., it can be applied in other countries as well. You'll read this document in the book, Breakthrough Power, and you'll also read about Joel's experiences in Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Canadian welcome to Joel Garvin. Thank you, Val. That was a, a very kind introduction. And thank you all for welcoming someone from uh, south of the border in these uh, pretty amazing times. This, is, this has been an incredible last couple weeks. And, and I'm not going to be presumptuous at all in expecting that any of you have been following the political scene <laughs> down there. Because I know you have your own that's going on concurrently with, uh, with our historic uh, presidential uh, election possibilities down in the U.S. Certainly you are aware of what is impacting all of our pocketbooks and our retirement accounts and uh, uh, portfolios of assets and that's this uh, economic meltdown that is seen to be spawned by uh, Wall Street. Uh, I think all of this can be tied in to what we are here to talk about and the message that we want to deliver. I, I think maybe the, the best way to start is to remind us that we should continually ask this question. What kind of world do we want? What kind of world do we want? And is the world that we've observed in these last two weeks that world? It doesn't fit my vision. I doubt it fits any of yours. It certainly doesn't fit the vision for the legacy that we have in the children, including the little Rio here, who is Jean's granddaughter, and she's incredibly bright. I have my own daughters and now a one-year-old granddaughter, and so it always keeps in the front of my mind what our obligation is to these who come after us. So what kind of world do we want? I mean, we can envision something where we have a, a world full of uh, abundance for everybody. It's a shared abundance. We have a world of cooperation, where we have a, a world with clean skies, silent streets, even when vehicles are traveling on them, where you can actually have a conversation curbside, even in the, in the middle of rush hour traffic. That's a possibility that, that new energy uh, uh, promises us. And the, the quaint idea of having gone to war for oil. How absurd! And I hope that, that when, when Rio is, uh, let's say, 20, she can look back and say, did this really happen? Did you guys really do that, Mommy? That doesn't make any sense. I'm glad that, that we don't have to do that. You know, that, that those are the types of things that, that I hold in, in my vision is a world of peace. One where, where there's no need to struggle and competition 
for, for scarce resources. We can use these promising new technologies to, to share uh, a tremendous abundance with everybody and, and dissolve this heavy, heavy blanket of fear that's been so pervasive all